What's up, Michigan? Coming to you once again from the State Champs Studios on the campus of Lawrence Technological University. Welcome to episode seven of State Champs Extra Point presented by our great friends here at Lawrence Tech. Congratulations to the Blue Devil fo football team on a 38 to 10 win over Madonna. As they should, as they should. Coach Mitchell, you go get them. Congratulations. All right, I'm Lauren Plant, joined by always as Sydney Carrio and Devin Gardner. Now, it broke my heart that I could not be here last week. Yeah, we heard that you actually decided I need a week from them. No. So that's why I'm not going to be there. No. Don't tell them that, though. I'm doing other things. So not true. But we still uh, blamed you for something. Yeah, that's what I'm I hope you tuned in. So even if it weren't, it, it yeah, wasn't, I know. It, I as you know, blame. You're right. Okay. I tried to blame John Kidd, and Devin was like, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, all right. It's all good. I can take it. Bring it. Week six of the high school football season, Sydney, was insane, as always. Um, I just can't wait to see what's going to happen, but uh, there's a lot to talk about on this show. Yeah, definitely, and I think we're really starting to see the identity of these teams, especially as we're getting into the home stretch of the season right now. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, the fluffy schedule part is usually over for most teams, and you get a chance to see teams against uh, other teams that are good and, and see if they are exactly who we thought they were or if they're a lot better or maybe a little worse. So it's been fun to watch, and, and the season's rolling right along. Yeah, and that brings us right into our takeaways from last week, sponsored by Figer Law. And listen, we had a big one for our game of the week between who was then number 12, Davison, took down then number 10, Wild Lake Western, Devin. That matchup, what yeah. can you say about this game? I mean, it's kind of what I just talked about. Yeah, like, you guys the did pretenders a great are job showing up. Really setting it up. Yeah, I mean, because we saw how good Wale Western has been with Darius, Darius Taylor in that running game. But what I was saying is that Davison is a team that plays defense. That's just what they do. Yeah. They play defense. Coach Jake Weingarts always has his team ready. And so I, I just thought that the quarterback would have to make some plays, and he wasn't able to do it. And those players, Jalen Flowers led yeah. that J Jalen Flowers led uh, Davison team was dominant yeah. to say the least. It was interesting you know, where you were wow. saying last week, you know, Jalen thought it was about half the yards that Darius Taylor had yeah. going into this particular matchup. I think he made them all up in one yeah. game. I think they watched our podcast, they heard the podcast, and said, said I'll you raise you one. We can. We can do a little yeah. better than that. You now know? watch us. Yeah. We did but, a lot better. Yes, and the final of that one, 52 to 14. Yeah, so that just shows it could have been right worse. there. Yeah. Right, you left the gas a little bit, right. but man. So wake up call for Western, no doubt about it. Yeah. For Davison, I think it puts them firmly right where they want to be uh, heading into the rest of the season to show, hey, D1, yeah. don't forget about the cards. Yeah, I think they are us. who we thought they were. They I thought are. they were a very, yeah. very talented they team, have. and it was just the, the stats and the, and the right. gaudiness of Wally well, like Western that got people super excited about it. But I think Davison is going to continue to be who we thought they were. Right. They have one blemish in their record, but other than that, yeah. they've been they've been rolling yeah. the rest of this season. So we'll see how they'll do. But one team who does doesn't have any losses. That's right. This season, Dexter Long. A lot of six and O teams, which is bizarre. Uh, and Dexter six and O for the first time since '63. You mentioned last week it was since '65. A couple years before that, they actually went six and O. I love it. I love I mean, it. President Kennedy Man. was still in office at this point. Um, and they're a team that really is putting the entire state of Michigan on notice right now. No doubt about it. Nearly 250 points this season they have scored. Cole Cabana, who I know you guys talked about last five. week. No doubt. He's uh, outstanding. And I'll tell you what, if you have not watched that, you need to watch that. It's, it's a great just look at, you know, you, you take a real uh, deep dive into the personality. Yeah. Obviously, you have, you go through some of, of the motions. You talk about football. Yeah. And you, and yeah, you of course, football is a part of it. You're right, exactly. Uh, but it's a really, really fun show. You should, you should check that out. And it's on the Valley Sports YouTube page. Yeah. Which you can and you can go on the app. It's, it's, yeah. it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So 125 yards, three TDs in the 21-14 win over Ann Arbor Huron. Uh, he's got 795 yards rushing, 16 TDs, 143 yards receiving, two TDs, two special teams. TDs. He does everything. And uh, again, going to Michigan. Now, the Dreadnoughts, uh, what's setting them apart right now is they're finding ways to win because they could have lost that game against Huron. Uh, they played well, but it was Cabana's last minute touchdown, which is actually what secured victory. Uh, and I'm saying it again. Um, you know, that's what makes great teams is finding a way to win when another team has got you, you know, y your back is up against the wall. And that's what makes teams special. They've got two and four Monroe this week and then a great matchup in two weeks when they take on undefeated Celine, mm. which is a matchup be between one. Mr. Football Candidate Cole Cabana and Mr. Football Candidate CJ yeah. Carr. Uh, I can't wait for that. Yeah, that is going to be a good one. And 
you know, you're throwing out some history lessons here. Yeah. So you come for the football, you stay for the history well, lessons, you know, right? I'm learning from you. <laughs> if you're, you were pouring it. So the professor here, I've got to stay, you know. Oh, you know, I'm taking after John Kidd. He just sits there and gives me all the facts. He knows it. He knows it. <laughs> but, you know, one team that was, I think this was a big matchup last week. We had Grand Rapids Catholic Central taking on South Christian. My goodness, you guys, Grand Rapids Catholic Central is on a 42-game win streak. That's a lot of games. And yeah. they fell short 36-34. to 34. A close one, but that winning streak has come to a close. Absolutely crazy game right here. South Christians win. They've now improved to 6-0 and is now in the driver's seat in first place in the OK Gold. So a huge win on their part. And really, South Christian made big plays on special teams. They returned a kickoff for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Momentum swing there. And then Grand Rapids Catholic Central missed two extra extra points one of them was blocked yeah. they also had penalties that made a big difference in this game three false starts yeah. to start their first drive you can't have that and then holding penalties down the stretch in the fourth quarter yeah. also not great so as we can see a lot you know penalties always can make a difference in Catholic big games Central, like that they have been on such a run you know it's like for for you you they're only human that you know they're going to finally you know uh, meet their match in a game you know like you we say any given friday um, and South Christian is a program that I don't think gets enough credit. Uh, yeah. re I mean, they're number one right now, I think, in Division Four. I believe it is. I could be wrong. Uh, but the bottom line is they had a double reverse in that game to score a touchdown in the second quarter. That was big. They just it was, too, it was like two heavyweights going at it. They score. The other team scores. It's like punch, counter punch. Uh, and was and the, the, all the students rushed the field it was so at the cool. end of the game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's what high school football right. is all about. Huge. They handed Grand Rapids Catholic Central their first loss since September 6th, 2019. I mean, that's great. I, I mean, mean, the thing is, the way that you'll lose, though, special teams, right. penalties. Yeah. Special and teams and penalties will, will, will yeah. get you a loss every time, and it'll break our winning streak, except for in Steubenville, where <laughs> we actually had the penalties, and we broke the winning streak. <laughs> You saying. know what, a theme that is... <laughs> in miraculous fashion, we should say. Play the clip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's go back in the archives here. Let's go back in the archives. Yeah. Since we're talking about... Since we're, yeah. talk, yeah. since we're talking about breaking yeah. streaks, I mean, yeah. we're not about dying. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I know. But that's, that's impressive. That's that very impressive. Yeah, and that yeah. team, that team yeah. is, is so special. 42 games is so hard to do. And I have to give a shout out to South Christian's quarterback who... We, quarterbacks have been a theme almost every week. Mm -hmm. We've talked about mm -hmm. literally since week one. So Jacob Dehan, he got it done under center. He threw for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, also got it done on the other side of the ball. Mm -hmm. He ran one back for a pick six. Ooh, see, I mean, now he's getting into that uh, Bra uh, no, what, what, Brady, Brady Rose, Brady Rose yeah. category. He's way past me because I'm not tackling Ty anybody. Ty Holtz in the state Ty championship Ty game. Holtz, yep, yep, you know, yep. It was almost the reason because he had mm -hmm. a pick six yeah. uh, against yeah. Dante Moore yeah. against King. So, yeah. We see, we see this uh, on the, yeah. on the so West So much side. respect for threat. quarterbacks playing defense. Yeah. Yeah. You understand how much Love quarterbacks that. have to deal with, yeah. right? Brady, Brady Rose yeah. and, and Ty Holtz. You yeah. have to deal with so much at the quarterback position, knowing defense, knowing plays, all these different things, getting the, getting the team excited. And then you go on defense and can contribute. Then, I was never able to do that. That is so impressive. So kudos. big guys. Yeah. These you are medium-sized guys right. at best. These are yeah. DBs who yeah. have to hit almost yeah. on every yeah. yeah. You know, and I read an article that he said he, he cramped up. <laughs> After yeah, that, he goes, bet. I don't know what happened. I drank a ton of water, but yeah. cramped up, he still got it done. I mean, yeah. triple threat. Yeah. Can do it in the air, on the legs, and on defense. I cramped up, and I didn't even play defense. So, so yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, that'll roll us right into our rankings, sponsored by Alta Equipment Company. And uh, we actually had no changes in the top five. We got number one, Belleville, number two, King, number three, De La Salle, number four, Adams, and number five, West Bloomfield. So, no shake up there. But it, we did. We do have a couple shakeups. And, and let me just say, before we go any further, I want to give the floor yeah. to our compadre here, Devin Garner. And Devin, this is just a general conversation oh, of course. about not letting some of the the rankings or things in the paper, whatever yeah, yeah. may be going on, yeah. to not let that distract well, I mean, you from what you have. When you when you're a talented program or or talented players, when you go to a level, you figure out. Media is media, and they're just doing their jobs, right? And so you shouldn't get butthurt or, or emotional or about anything, honestly. Anything they say, it all can be taken with a grain of salt because it can all be proved on the field. There's no reason for you to get all upset with a ranking or whatever the case may be. Like we talked about, blame Lauren. You think Lauren is crying because we're blaming Lauren, even though he doesn't directly do the rankings? 
Do you think he's getting all upset? Yeah. Absolutely not. So I think that the, the the coaches, the players, you should go out and play football. That's period. Don't, don't worry about the show. Worry about what's being said about you. You should probably go out and play football. And guess what? You play good football, we'll talk good about you. Absolutely. And you'll be ranked high. Or, or if you don't want to be ranked, you won't be. I mean, it doesn't matter. right? right. We're going to do our job. You're going to be ranked if we want to rank you. Right. And you won't be ranked if you don't want to, don't need to be ranked. So yeah. that's pretty much it there. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? A lot of this a lot of momentum here for some teams yes. and some teams jumping into the top 20 which one of them Lauren a locked yeah. in team Livonia Franklin Livonia Franklin coming in at number 17 this week let's talk about the Patriots only the second time in 17 years they've gotten off to a 6 and 0 start uh, 2019 was the other they won the proverbial Livonia City Championship on Friday this is because you've got Franklin you've got Livonia Stevenson and you've also got Livonia. Churchill, for the first time in three years, they win the city championship. 24-7 victory. It was homecoming. They beat uh, Churchill 35-13 in week three. 24-7 was the, the um, uh, score on Friday. A shout out to running back Cordell Mabins. This is a guy who uh, Stevenson, for the most part, shut him down in the first half. Uh, they basically went in saying, you're not going to let this guy beat us. We're going to, if we lose, it's not going to be because because of Mabins, but 16 carries, 147 yards, and a 57-yard touchdown. Most of that all taking place in the second half to help secure victory. Mabins got it done. Uh, he is close to getting to 1,000 yards on the season. He has 15 touchdowns. Fortson on the schedule this week. They should win that. This is not uh, the Fortson teams we've seen in the past, but then again, you know, they could rise up. But I'm expecting um, for Franklin to win th that particular game then. Number one, Belleville on the clock. Another opportunity to see what you're made of. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And we, we, so we mentioned this at the top of the show. There are a handful of teams that are 6-0 yeah. still still riding that undefeated record right now. And one of them of is your who to watch. So who do you got? Yeah, Grand Rapids, Forest Hill Central. Not a team that gets a whole lot of pub out on this side. They get a lot of talk on the west side, and rightfully so. They are 6-0. Little connection here between Forest Hill Central and Livonia Franklin. The Rangers were 12-0 in 2017 before falling to Franklin in the Division II state semifinals. Uh, and this is their best start since that season. They beat 4-1 uh, and one Lowell last Friday, 14-7. to seven. Credit the defense for the Rangers, only 44 points they've given up all season. That is getting it done. Max Richardson and Crandall Quinn combined for a big sack as Lowell was driving late in the game. So Forest Hill Central now in control of the OK White with two games to go. Three of the last four years, they have lost to Muskegon, Mona Shores, talking about Brady Rose, uh, in the playoffs. One of my favorite players yes, of all time. Yes, exactly. If they meet again, we'll see if the defense this year for Forest Hill Central can actually stop the Sailors. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, come for the football, stay for the facts and the history of these teams. We love it. Now for Devin, lock yes. in team at number three, De La Salle. Yeah, De La Salle, they had the one, the one blemish, which we're, we're starting, on, starting to find out. We're starting Still to find shocked. out. After watching the way, you know, uh, Catholic Central kind of dominated uh, Brother Rice and then the way that De La Salle dominated Catholic Central this past week, we're starting to find out that maybe – De La Salle kind of slept walk into that one. And then once that it's ball the gets Central rolling, Division absolutely. Too, once the I ball mean, gets rolling and, and you give a team that you should beat a chance, right? It, it, it's hard to stop them, right? Like we talked about how good the quarterback was for Brother Rice in that game. But they went back to what they do. And, and they, <laughs> that, that Catholic Central defense is nothing to play with. Right. And uh, Brady Drogas was able to do whatever he wanted to. 28-0. Uh, 28-0. Zero, zero points, yeah. right? And so, like, just completely dominated the game. Yeah. So, I, I think the De La Salle was right back on track to what we thought they would be uh, moving towards the season. And, and, and I'm going to just be clear. I think the Coach Roan maybe not like that loss, but I think he, he appreciated it because it keeps you in a, in a mind frame of we still need to improve. We still need to do more. We still can be beat. And, and I think that's super important, especially early in the season. You know, you'd rather, have, rather it happen early than have it happen late and you have to go home. Right. Sometimes you just need that wake-up call to, yeah, right. you know, not everything is going to be perfect every game. you got to find a way to overcome that adversity. And that was, for those who follow the Catholic League, that was the Boys Bowl. Mm -hmm. And the Boys Bowl is the biggest game of the year within, you know, there's a lot of pomp and circumstance and, and things that go around that game. Mm -hmm. And so for De La Salle to dominate the, the way they did, uh, sends a big message. And of course, the next big game will be the Prep Bowl, which uh, will be for the uh, Catholic League Championship. They couldn't afford to lose, that's for sure. So really, uh, it's, it's kind of wide open. Orchard Lake beats Brother Rice. 
Uh, and Unbelievable. Yeah, so I mean, it just shows you year in, year out, every year in that division, no matter where a team sits in the rank, in the uh, you know st standings or what their record is, anything can they happen. Can just show up. Yeah. So you've got to be. So it's it's a great test to get you ready for real time, which is playoff. Yeah, and another team who's been tested a lot this season, and some and a team that's in the top ten, Dakota. I mean, I love what I've seen from Dakota. Dakota is getting back to the Dakota of old. I remember in 2006 I came into high school, and I think that was around the time they had won one or two state championships in a row. Right. And, and everybody was like kind of afraid of, yeah. of Dakota. They were so good, and then they kind of had a lull where they were still good, but just not as, as dominant. I remember going and, and scrimmaging them even when I was at Inkster High School, and it's just like, wait, what are they feeding the children over here? Right, They're, these kids are so big and so powerful and so tough. Now, I think they're getting back to that, and, and they very well could – finish this season undefeated. They have uh, Utica Eisenhower coming up, uh, Utica Ford, Mumford. I mean, they could go into the playoffs undefeated. And, and this is something that I'm sure that they're super excited about because they have been waiting to get back to that kind of dominance and, and they've been playing football in dominant fashion with good competition. I really, I'm really impressed by, by them. And to answer your question, steak and pasta. Steak and pasta. That's what yes, they eat. Of course. That's what they eat. So, yeah, so I found out that. that they have like pregame meal. Oh, yeah. I'm like, wait. Style. We don't have a pregame meal. Pregame meal. That's what they were missing. You better eat before you get here. Get you a McDonald's. Uh, what was it? The, the, the Mc, 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 no, Mc, McMuffin. Get a McMuffin before right. you go. Uh, Whatever. Uh, oh, my goodness. Good. Eating good in the neighborhood. And one more team that's someone you need to watch that could creep into our top 20 rankings, Mason. They are 6-0 in Division Three, so that's someone we're going to keep our eye on as the season continues. And as we head into Week 7, we'll see all these teams get tested. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we take a peek at what's happening in the Mr. Football race. And to do that, Sean Belisian here, set to talk all about it. Sydney did a great job last week, uh, but it's great to, for me to be back here talking shop with you. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a few weeks. It's great. You know, I was out, you were out, now we're back, so let's go. Let's talk about the senior quarterback from Rochester Adams, Parker Pico. This is a guy who will eclipse 1,000 yards this week in both passing and rushing. Yeah, what a phenomenal year he's having, a phenomenal career, a phenomenal athlete. In case you missed it, this is a guy that plays quarterback. He plays safety. He's a punt returner. Oh, by the way, he's an accomplished baseball player who's going to be taking his talents down to Alabama to play for the Crimson Tide baseball team. But we are talking about football, and there is a lot to talk about in regards to this guy's play on the gridiron. Highlanders first and foremost off to a five and one start. This guy, six foot two, 200 pounds, is leading the way. Lauren, as you mentioned, 985 yards passing with 12 scores, an additional 933 yards rushing with 11 scores. Surely he's going to eclipse both those marks. And this is a guy to watch the rest of the way. He's going to make a serious play for this coveted baby right here. Committed to play baseball at Bama, but should he? It's a great question. You you know as his success I think they're coming now. Yeah. There's going to be some knocks on the door. There's no doubt about that. So let's see if he can be persuaded to change his mind. He's a heck of a player for a heck of a team up there at Rochester Adams. And if anything, the trend in college football is athletes, yep. guys who can just do so many different things. Uh, he, I think he's going to get some really attractive offers. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, over 37,000 votes, Sean, have been cast so far this season in the State Champs Mr. Football Race, presented, of course, by our friends at Hungry Howie's. And again, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so buy a pie and support a great cause. So uh, Hungry Howie's every year does a fantastic job in the money that they donate to uh, help those who are suffering and hopefully find a cure someday for breast cancer. But uh, we have got a doozy of a competition at the top of this race. As of Wednesday, West Bloomfield's Samaj Morgan leading the vote with just over 16,000 votes. And right behind him, about 1,000 votes away, is Dexter's Cole Cabana. So now, even if your guy is not putting up, say, the numbers that those two guys are, it's important to vote because, yes, the people's champion, the online vote winner, will get an automatic berth into the Final Four. The state champ selection committee, though, and there's many of us, are going to choose the other three. And if the group is torn, and this has happened in years past, about who should advance, we look at what kind of voting support 
each person has received and it matters. I, you know, it's a process and one of the things we do every year in case you're new to this is we literally tape us in the room having some of the conversations and whittling that down to four. But the people's choice, you're in. I mean, that's just the way it is. So you have an opportunity to go out there and vote for your guy. Yeah, and you have a 20% advantage to win the whole thing. So a lot of perks there. If you're the people's champion, keep voting at statechampsnetwork.com. Click on the Hungry Howie's banner. Do it today. Do it as often as you like. We're going to take a quick break and check out this week's Game Changers brought to you by DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Hi, I'm Laura Ramos with DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine with today's Game Changers Pop Quiz. True or false, are athletes at more risk for injury in cold weather? The answer is true. During short duration exercise, there's a positive relationship between performance and muscle temperature. Muscle function is impaired with cold temperature and improved by hot temperature. A recent study looking at NFL players showed they had two times higher risk of concussion and one and a half times higher risk of ankle injuries when the temperature was 50 degrees Fahrenheit or colder compared to games played at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. This does not mean you should not compete or train when it's cold. Make sure you're wearing layers of clothing to keep you warm and continue to hydrate the same as you do when you're competing or training in warm temperatures. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Then go where the pros go. DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. For immediate care, call 313-910-9328 or visit dmc.org slash game changers. All right, guys, time to get into an Anvil Award conversation presented by our great friends at Hungry Howie's. Of course, it's Pink Box Month, supporting breast cancer. Buy a pizza, support the cause. Lauren planned again here. The coach, Tim Beckler, longtime Canton head coach, Hall of Famer in the MHSFCA, and coach, for the first time in a few weeks, we're not going to have a change in our Anvil Top 10. Uh, and this week, we want to talk about Birmingham Brother Rice senior, Eric Doherty. Now, the Warriors have been really up, knocking off the number one team in the state in De La Salle a few weeks back. Uh, lost a close battle to Detroit Catholic Central two weeks ago, and I know they're not happy with their last weekend. Uh, failing against Orchard Lake St. Mary's, but that is the Catholic League Central Division. You had a lot of experience playing against teams uh, in that. But if you would have told me that both Brother Rice and Orchard Lake St. Mary's would be two and four heading into week seven, I would have said, no way. Yeah, it, that's a great league. Yeah. I mean, you can be four and five and still be a great football team coming out of that league. It's it's a phenomenal league. And, and teams that have gone all the way to the state championship and won them with uh, just four wins heading into the playoffs. But Eric Stordery is again uh, a guy who is uh, in only his second year as a starter, uh, yet we have him in this competition because he's that good. Yeah, and he's a big fella. He's 6'5", 285, uh, committed to Boston College. Um, great student, 3.9 GPA. Um, what I like about him is his explosiveness off the football. He's got a great takeoff. And, uh, you know, he uh, gets to the ball. What I really like about his pass rush, and as a one technique or a nose guard, you really aren't kind of the, the quarterback sacker. Um, right. It's just difficult because you're facing a lot of double teams. But his get off really beats people, and he matches hands. And what I mean by that is when the quarterback's getting ready to throw, he's really good at getting his hands to match his hand. He gets a lot of batted balls, and uh, he's very disruptive with quarterbacks. Well, there you go. And again, we've got three Catholic League Central guys in our Anvil Award competition right now with Braden Corser going in last week. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Hey, guys, remember, it's important that you vote in this competition. You go to statechampsnetwork.com on the homepage. Click on the Anvil banner. You'll see the full list of top 10 candidates. It also has our criteria there, so there's some good information. And again, once you vote, you can vote every three minutes for your guy. There's no email that needs to be inputted anymore, any of that. Uh, you'll see the results of how things are going. Right now, leading the vote as of Wednesday, uh, that's when we record this segment. Dearborn Divine Child O-lineman uh, Dylan Senda, 4,777 votes. 
His community is coming out for him. Now, if that continues, he'll have an automatic berth into the Final Four when we shut down the vote following it's right around regionals time of the season. So uh, once again, get out there, vote for your guy. It's important, and we'll see you next week. Well, as always, we have a slate of really good games we are going to be covering around the state. So we're going to start previewing some of these sponsored by Menards. We'll start with a Thursday lineup. We've got Chandler Park at Leadership Academy, University Prep at Old Redford, and some eight-player football. How about this, you guys? Oakland Christian at Genesee. Now on Friday, of course, Friday Night Lights, you got to love it. And remember, all of these games will be on overtime powered by State Champs on Valley Sports. So we're going to we'll be have all the highlights. We'll have it all. So on Friday, we've got Northville at Heartland, Country Day at U of D Jesuit, Gladwin at Notre Dame Prep, Bishop Foley at Gabriel Richard, Bedford at Celine, Cast Tech at East English Village. Now, Devin, we got a good one here in Eisenhower at Dakota. Yeah, I mean, I, we've already talked about Dakota yeah. extensively, yeah. and there's a lot online for them. But uh, you know who I'm interested to see? Preston Crump. I remember him a couple of years ago. He's a freshman just running around, trying to do his deal, playing against Chippewa, getting knocked all around. Yes. But now he has his team with just one loss and, and, and ready to compete and try to shake up some things in that Mac red. Uh, but the thing that's online for Dakota is a chance to outright win the Mac red. Yeah. And, and if they can go out and take care of business, I think that that's going to be really good for them. And, and like I talked about, Dakota's back. We're back. I think they're, they're really back. The biggest school in the state of Michigan, I think that they are back in Division One. You look at that district, the MAC Red, all these teams are so good. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a handful, 5-1. and one. You got Dakota 6-0. and oh. I mean. Yeah. And a, a lot of times they end up playing each other. They all beat up on yeah. each other, yeah. Just, yeah. So whatever happens here, they're going to do it again. Yeah, it just shows how important every single Friday night is this season. And now, Sometimes Saturday or Thursday. Yeah, okay. So the back half of the week, that's so important. <laughs> that back half of the week is so important. You know, in college, to get to Thursday in college Thursday starts the weekend. So you, as you remember, I'm sure. That's true. You know, it actually starts when we record this on Wednesdays and we roll right into <laughs> the rest the weekend. of the week. We launch it. Yeah, yeah. We, we get the party rolling. Now, Lauren, we've got a good one here with Carlton Airport at Riverview. Huge game in the Huron League. We don't talk enough about here, the Huron League here on the show, and we should. Uh, two teams. Riverview 6-0 and for the third straight season. Carleton Airport hasn't been 5-1 and in 11 years. And it's been a decade since the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets mm -hmm. have beaten the Pirates. So the winner will be in the driver's seat to win the Huron League. Both teams compete in Division Four, most likely, as we just said, in this, too, they will meet again in the districts, in the playoffs. Uh, both teams put up a lot of points, but defensively, I give Riverview the advantage. This is a team that uh, just seems to really be clicking on all cylinders. We'll see, though, because this is a different Jets team that, outside of a stumble versus New Boston Huron, two weeks ago they have really played well. So we'll see how it turns out. I think Riverview is probably still the best team in the league, but, again, any given Friday, yep. Jets rise up and they win this game, then that's going to give them huge momentum. All right, let's get into our preview of the Valley Sports Football Friday Game of the Week presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. We're getting into some action. We've been talking Mac Red on this show today. Uh, this time, number eight Chippewa Valley takes their 5-1 record on the road to face their Red Division rivals from Romeo. Bulldogs sitting at 4-2 following a 21-14 loss to Dakota, who we've talked a lot about on this show, a team that beat the Big Reds a week before being Dakota. Chippewa Valley riding a six-year win streak over the Bulldogs. So they've got the rivalry in hand right now. However, it was a great game one year ago as Romeo roared back. They were down 20 points to Chip Valley, only to lose by a field goal. 37-34 was the final in that one. This one also taking place at Barnabo Field. So uh, it's going to be an exciting one. Yeah, yeah. And before we dive more into that, I actually stopped by Chippewa Valley's practice yesterday, and Coach Merchant has um, has something he wants to say to both of you. So, Lauren, well, a message to Lauren for Hmm. I, I just want to know how he keeps his hair the way he keeps his hair. <laughs> Obviously, I hair. don't have much <laughs> left, but, like, it's like uh, it just doesn't move. Like it doesn't look. It looks like CGI or something. So I want to, Lauren. I want to know your secret. I want to know your secret. Maybe I can get some plugs or some uh, hair transplant, and then uh, 
whatever you put in that. I want to know what your hair product is for Fire. sure. Probably some leave-in conditioner, I would guess. <laughs> So what is the secret? Please, yeah, tell Lauren? us. We're blaming Lauren. Yeah, wait, what's, what's the, secret? the secret? With the hair. I mean, it's been like this since I was a high school player. I don't understand how you're keeping your hair with these coaches yelling at you about rankings and all this. How are you keeping this hair like this? <laughs> this is amazing. You know, I think it's genetics. All right, I, I really, there is nothing that is uh, extraordinary about what I do as far as how I prepare my bouffant. Uh, I think so. Coach Merchant caught you off guard. He did, he did. Uh, he, but this is this is a topic that I do get once in a while uh, out uh, as I make my rounds, uh, doing my job. Just doing my Just job. Doing my I job. have to take those hair comments. They always come up, but hey, uh, again, you know, Mer Mer hair. Merchant is follically challenged. <laughs> and if I could help that young man, I would do whatever I could to, uh, to let you, but I, I, unfortunately, I believe that that train left the station <laughs> that train about is a 20 go on. years ago. Go so, um, but um, God bless him. I don't reveal the secrets. I feel like that should be uh, its own video, I you know, as far as. He, that train left the station is freshman quarterback Devin Gardner, I think, is kind of the reason he, he was at UD. Wow. maybe. It's funny you bring up freshman quarterback Devin Gardner. Oh, he does oh, no. have oh, no. a question for you. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Here goes nothing. What is your message to Devin? My message, yeah, my message to Devin is, um, what what happened? What happened before the Allen Park game? I'm still like, I just need closure. You know, you're 14 years old. You're my starting QB as a freshman. You're my guy. We go to practice. Everything's good. And then you show up in my office the next morning at eight o'clock with crutches on a full leg cast. So uh, just come clean with me, man. It's all love. So just let me know. All right. We'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Why does he keep doing this? Why is he bringing that up? <laughs> this is intriguing. Okay, so here's the truth. Football season's coming to a close my freshman year, obviously, as you know, starting. And we actually had a pretty decent season that year. We, we were, came in really close to beating Brother Rice with Chris Colasanti and those guys. So we're about to play Allen Park, the last game of the year, crossover game. Um, and so after practice, was it Sat Thursday after the practice? I go into the gym because basketball season's coming, and yeah. people are in there shooting. So I just go in there, and and they leave, and it's just me, and I'm shooting, I'm dunking, I'm doing my deal, right? And then I walk out, and you know, you walk in the gym, and then walk down that little, that little way to the locker room, and yeah, I, yeah. and I'm walking down that way. I, I got right to like where the bathrooms oh, are, yeah. And my knee kind of snapped. I'm just walking, regular walking. This is 100% true. Regular, I wish there were cameras. I wish we could get to the footage. Yeah. I'm just walking regular, and I'm like, oh, what the hell? What just happened, yeah. right? And so I walk into the locker room. I, I sit down. I, you know, I start, you start rubbing it a little bit, and then I take my hands off and look down, and it is like a pumpkin. Oh, no. So instantly, you know, 14 years old, yeah. I'm thinking my career is over, yeah. and I burst into tears, and I call, oh, my God, you got to come get me. We got to go to the Go to emergency, and, um, yeah, I, I, I forgot, I think it was meniscus or something. And like literally just like that. Like it, and then the next day I had a, a, the cast all the way up to my all hip. All the way up. And so Merchant's looking like, what? How was my quarter? That's probably why he left us. That's probably what left, left one to brother. He's like, I can't take this anymore. I can't take this anymore. My quarterback has a broken leg. He was fine at practice. Yeah, it was, it was what we ended up winning that game. It was a super, I, I like to think I'm the reason that we were able to play so inspired. Because they, you know, everybody was like, we gotta get behind our quarterback who broke his leg somehow. No, don't, don't, we're not gonna talk about that, but we're gonna get behind our quarterback, yeah. But that's, a little, it was the fluke, most of the fluke thing. I mean, I guess I maybe shouldn't have been playing basketball. Well, you know, season's over, we're not gonna make playoffs. It wasn't while you were playing. It you wasn't, yeah, I was walking. Couldn't yeah, exactly. believe it. Couldn't believe yeah. it. It was just funny. But I'm sure it had something to do with me jumping and doing whatever after practice. I don't know, but I literally just walking and it's like it snapped. It was, oh, it was terrible. Oh man, that's funny. But this uh, this matchup on Friday night is going to be a good one between. Yeah. Always is. Yes, yeah. always is between number eight Chippewa Valley at Romeo. It's always tough going yeah. into an opponent's house. The Valley's Sports Football Friday game of the week starts at 7:30. It's always a special time, uh, and uh, should be a great game. Immediately following the game, remember to check in uh, and to stay tuned to Valley Sports, or you can watch the, the live stream here on State Champs. Uh, website or on the YouTube page for sure uh, is the OT. So it's Football Friday's OT powered by State Champs. 
So it's the York and Plant show again this week, which I think sounds like a law firm. But uh, we will be holding it down again in studio, bringing you all the highlights of everything that's taking place. So make sure you t tune in to everything going on State Champs Network all weekend long. So lots of football this weekend. We hope you enjoy it. And uh, by all means, thank you so much for being here for another edition of Extra Point. And next week is going to be even crazier. And maybe we'll have more coaches asking us I'll see what absurd I can do. questions. <laughs> State Champs Extra Point is powered by Lawrence Technological University. Visit l2athletics.com and recruit yourself. Extra Point is also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, a proud partner of the MHSAA. The Detroit Medical Center Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine Pros. Visit dmc.org slash Game Changers. Alti Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. Hungry Howie's Pizza, famous for flavor. Figer Law, nobody knows the law like we do. Menards, save big money on all your home improvement needs. And by the Southeast Michigan Ford Dealers, Think Ford first.